Nerd Nation, welcome back to Random Musings from the Clinical Trials Guru uh, episode number. Chris Hubbard, can you guess? As we're enjoying these Heineken's. Two, Happy late birthday, by the way. Uh, thank you, sir. Uh, 251. 251. I was going to ask if the episode is, what, what's older, the episode or your age? <laughs> well, I'm surely not 251 years old. No, but people would never guess how old you are. You look... I wouldn't say much younger, but you look younger. Yeah? Yeah. Don't people, I mean, 40's the new 30, right? That's right. So doesn't everybody look younger? Yes. For the most part. I think people are taking better care, as we're sitting here drinking Heineken. They're aging better? I think people are taking care of their bodies better. So. Uh, let's see how many carbs is in this. I'm not on keto right now. But are people aging better? 11 grams of carbs in this bottle. Yeah, it's not, it's not a light beer. <laughs> Not at all. Uh, okay, so if you want to guess Chris's age, email chris at brkthru.org. What are you going to give them? Uh, I don't know. If, if, if they guess, like, on the good side... Are you going to Venmo them money? If they guess on the good side, I'll, I'll thank them very kindly. Mm. By the way, we're Venmoing if people money, If anybody guesses right? 25, we'll be very happy. Are you? Yeah, you're going to Venmo people money? No. We're Venmoing book buyers money, right? That we are talking doing. about that. Yes. Yeah, that we were, something like that. Yeah. We're thinking about it right now. Mm -hmm. But that's going to be off the air. Uh, okay, so I got a several wait, questions. Wait, wait, wait. Was that yeah. right on the episode number? Oh, what did you say? 251. You no, just you're right. <laughs> I was thinking about what I was going to say next. No. It's episode 255. Wow. Well, I think that's probably so off. Episode 255, yeah, you gotta get calibrated again. Get your equipment calibrated. Yeah, I got it exactly right last time, and now I'm way off. That's right. Episode 255, yeah, last time you were right, spot on. Yeah. Uh, 255, got a bunch of questions here. Uh, it's been a busy uh, week, busy month, busy year. Is it ever not busy? <sighs> lately, no. And by lately, I mean the last three years. Two, three years. At least for us. Sometimes the yeah. size gets low, but yeah. not you and I. Right. Uh, we're also working on the book. Which is... The Comprehensive Guide to Clinical Research. Surprisingly kind of enjoyable at this point. Yeah. We'll have more Heinekens when we read the book. We're going to finish, hopefully finish recording it Friday. I don't think that's going to happen, but okay. We're doing it in the comfort of your home. We'll so be very optimistic. We can even take a nap and then wake up and do it again. Yeah. I call dibs on the guest room. <laughs> Um, okay, so we're going to do that. The book, the physical book's almost done, too. Yeah. Tomorrow I'm expecting the edited version. From Eileen? From Eileen, and then... Has she... As if anyone knows who that is. No, they don't. No, she hasn't. Okay. Uh, other than me sending her articles uh, for the Clinical Scoop. The clinical scoop com. So she hasn't said she got started on it, or she's almost done with it? No, but she know. never tells me that. Like, she just sends it when it's done. Yeah, this is a little different. Yeah, I know. No. She hasn't. Right. If I don't get it by tomorrow night, I'm going to email her. Well, what's tomorrow? Tomorrow is Tomorrow's Wednesday. Wednesday, yeah. She yeah. said she'll have it by Wednesday. Right. So, okay. yeah. I'm expecting something. She's pretty good about that. Right. Um, and then Lucky's going to put it together. We're going to put it on the, with all the images on um, Amazon. Mm -hmm. Then, hopefully, I'll read it. I'll read through it Thursday. You can read through it. We'll still sell it. You can read through it if you want. And if we make like minor changes, we can revise the book. Yeah. And then whoever bought the error. That's not a problem. No, but whoever bought the error copy, oh. like they're not going to be huge errors. It's, it's, but, like, it's like buying a tops card with an error. Yeah, remember the errors? <laughs> yeah. Lately, I've been getting back into the baseball cards with the swap meets. I found right. I actually got some good steals. Um, you know, I think I think and I I think baseball cards, basketball cards are making a comeback. Yeah. Um, one of the guys that I follow on YouTube, Gary Vaynerchuk, he feels the same way. Like he was a avid card collector, mm. as you and I both were when we were kids. Mm -hmm. He says they're making a comeback, but specifically the NBA. Do you still have? Well, really? Yeah. Uh, that'd be too bad. Because but... people are losing interest in baseball and football with all the whole CTE issue, but the NBA is like the clear favorite to excel from the big sports. Well, I hope he's wrong in his baseball because I still have all my cards from when I was a little kid. Well, those will go up too. Like a rising tide raises all ships, but 
the best, in his opinion, and I tend to agree, is the NBA going forward. Okay. So I actually bought like a Lonzo Morning rookie card at the uh, swap meet. Mm-hmm. Um, the, I don't even know who that is. The guy is. wanted two dollars per card. Mm-hmm. He literally had a table like this, and you could tell he didn't know anything about cards. Mm-hmm. So I was like, how much? And he's like, two bucks. And I was like, for the whole pack? Like, I just grab a pack? He's like, no, no, two cards, uh, two bucks each card. So I was like, okay. So then I started looking. I literally looked through, like, almost all his cards. And I got, like, all the good ones that I wanted. And I knew I was going to negotiate. So when I got, you know, and I spent, like, half an hour there. So he wanted something out of me. I literally touched all sure. his cards. So I knew I had the leverage. Well, and you also knew that you were interested too. Yeah, so you and I would have paid two bucks a card, but when you go to flea markets, the sport is to negotiate. Sure, that's the enjoyment. For me, and uh, so I said, hey, you know, give me these five, I had five cards, give me these five for uh, five bucks. No, no, I said, give me these five for four bucks. And he said, oh no, you know, it's two each. And I was like, yeah, but... I only want five of these, and I don't feel like paying uh, ten bucks. I said, but I do feel like paying uh, four. And these are really, like, old, you know, a lot of people touch them. So he's like, all right. He's old, like, that, that's, that, that's a derogatory thing. Yeah, he's like, just, baseball, he's like just, give me, just give me four bucks. I was like, all right, cool, thanks. So then I got it, and I looked them up. I didn't want to look on my phone while I was doing that, because then he would know. Right. So I did it after, but I knew they were more than 75 cents each. And one of them's going on eBay anywhere from 12 to 60 bucks. Mm-hmm. One of the cards. Then I also have a Robin Yount. Remember Robin Yount? Well, I have his card still. I didn't find a rookie of his, but I found a 77. I think his rookie was 75. Se- I have a 79. 79? You might have the same one. I, I either have 78 or 77, but I know it's not the rookie card. His rookie card 75. Mm-hmm. Anyways, I don't know where I'm going with this, but uh, just talking. Yeah, I, we got off on this tangent. I don't remember why. Something to do with the book. Oh yeah, it'll be like an error. Yes. So when you edit the book, it's already gonna be out there. Some people, but it'll be like a collector's item. That's right. If there are any glaring errors, there probably won't be. Because uh, I'll read through it before well, we so actually publish. It'll have been edited twice, and if you go through it, that'll be a third time. Right. So they'll probably hit the market optimistically Friday, Friday night. Amazon sells to approve it. So don't don't it. any uh, audience members hold your breath. But no, but what you can do instead of holding your breath, which would be dumb, <laughs> is uh, <laughs> to text Guru. Text the word Guru. What's the number? To three one nine nine six. Because as soon as it is released, you're gonna know first. Then my email list. But you're going to be able to get it for 99 cents. Your image is blurred. Yeah, on purpose. It's supposed to look like fast. Mm. Yeah. 99 cents for the Kindle. It won't be the printed version. Yeah, that's only how many are getting it for 99 cents. Uh, I think we'll keep it open for like two hours. So it could be a thousand. Yeah, we could very well go bankrupt after this book. Yeah, let's not do that. I don't think it'll go bankrupt, but if a thousand people bought it at 99 cents, it's still good. But then we'll change it to the original price of 49.99, right? Yep. And then the Audible, Audible will be the same price. Yep. All right, so ready to go through these questions? Sure. They're all over the place, right? One of them... Oh, and you know what? I guess this is a good spot to bring this up. Before you get into the questions, I want to yeah. go back to the book real quick. So, there was something when we were just going through the book, and it was on our, on our off-topic conversation, or, you know, when we were having a conversation about something that was just read, it was about the... Oh, yeah, tell them why we did it, because we go off script, we're not just reading the book. People don't know, we forgot to mention them this thing. Yes. We're not just reading the book, that's boring. We're reading it, we're stopping when appropriate and going completely off script. Off script, but not off topic, off script. And this, yeah, not off topic. We went off topic well, today. Well, we did that too a little bit. Though, with the way. baseball cards, but the, we're staying on topic for the most part. Right. Uh, but we're sharing anecdotal stories 
we're sharing experiences, sometimes humorous stories. Yeah, additional sometimes, information. Yeah, sometimes shocking stories, um, all kinds of stuff. And my chucks keep getting uh, dirty. Don't do that. Also bought a twenty dollar pair of trip tailors. Yeah, you showed me. For twenty they wanted twenty five. I said no. no, no You're quite me off topic again. Alright, go ahead. So book, book. So we were covering um, protected populations. Do you remember talking yeah, about Yeah, vulnerable groups. Yeah. Vulnerable populations, yeah. yeah. And we said there were three, right? So I just, I don't know why, but I Googled that yesterday. And now there's like a dozen. I think that matters in the book, because we only mentioned three, right? The last time I recall covering this, well, the it book's was not, only free. The book's not out yet, so we can we can correct. But you that. can't like go back and we have to find it on the Audible. Yeah. No, on the Audible we can just go off script again when it's appropriate because the vulnerable population is going to come up again. Okay. In the Audible book, we only got through twenty five percent of the. So it used to be three, but now it's you know yeah political correctness and everything. So it we'll, all kinds of. We'll change it in the physical book. And in the audio... No, there, there isn't... It's not listed in the physical... Oh, well, no, actually, it is listed. It is, because we yeah. read it. So we'll change that. And then in the audible... This is why we go off script a lot. Right. We're going to bring it up again. Right. And we'll, we'll focus... Uh, we'll go in depth. See, the audible is like two books. It's the book itself, and then our banter is another book. Yep, I would agree. <clears throat> All right, let's get to these questions. And I know there was some on email, and you got you got questions from a client today. Let's why don't we talk? Start with that one. I don't recall what you question. talked to a bunch. What was one of the most interesting? Um, none of them. I'll think of one. Okay, you think of one because there were none of them were interesting. One of our clients in the Northeast. Don't want to give it away. She's a CRA. Mm -hmm. I know who you're talking about. So she had a ah. she had a question. Yes. Okay. She said. She's a new site owner, and she said, hey, I got asked by the sponsor what an investigational... Something or another that we, neither of us have heard of. Let me pull it up. Let me pull it up. You remember this now? Yes, I remember, but I don't remember what the term was. She was asking about some term. What is this? What? How do I fill this position? Can a, does a pharmacist work? It's like, well, I don't even know what that position is. As with an industry, the research industry, that's... Yeah, I got it. Go ahead. I have two questions. I need a thermometer for fridge and freezer. The sponsor wants one. She just got awarded a study. Sponsor wants one where you can download the readings. So let's translate what that actually means. Yeah, people. sure. I, and I sent her a link for this. Uh, right, but thermometer. to get the podcast... Many, many different types. Um, it's just a thermometer where... You can set how often the temperature is recorded, and you can print out those results. So I think the particular thermometer I sent her goes up to one second, and it'll do it for every second. Mm -hmm. And I'll, it records up to 500,000 times. So you can print 500,000 seconds of temperature recording. Those are called continuous reading thermometers. And as opposed to the min-max you have in the office where it just... It does that too. It has min-max. Right, but... As opposed to just those, yeah. they're giving you a continuous reading. So right. sponsors prefer that because you can see what it was. Like you can confirm the min max, basically. Right. right. With the min max, you're just kind of like, well, you know, maybe well, not like, reset it. Well, not only like that, but right, you can confirm it. Right. Not only like that, but with the min max, and some of them don't even tell you uh, what the maximum temperature was, it's just that the setting was exceeded. Right. Correct. That's another one. So this will tell you. So it's literally a USB thing you can plug into your laptop mm -hmm. and it's going to let you print out right. basically an Excel file of right. all the dates and, and what the temperatures were and you can you can, you can can adjust the settings to where it captures every minute. Yeah, one second too often. One yeah, second way too often. wasting so much paper. Right, and space. Yeah. On the, on the file. It should be, I would think, no more than once every hour. But right. Once every ten minutes. So you give her the links. Once. You give her the links for that. Yeah. Second question. This is the one I was getting at. Um, test article preparer. She says, "Do you have any idea what this person actually does?" I have a pharmacist who I think I can use. So test article preparer is synonymous with investigational product preparer. 
Maybe. I think that's what it means. 99% You're still sure. still kind of guessing. 99% really? sure. Really? 99%? I'm yeah. surely not. Test the article. It's just, it sounds like someone from Europe or another country it's where English is not their first language. Okay, well, IP prep would be a... Uh, IP well, prep is the English... Well, level way understandable. It. Test yes. article preparer. Right. Which, so, but this is, ex this is a perfect example of how context matters when you are a new site owner or an experienced site owner. Like, if you've seen things asked enough times, you can kind of guess what. Well, I've seen things mean. asked a lot, and I wouldn't guess that. I know. I came up with that answer. Yeah. That's pretty good. Test article preparer, that could be some assessment. Well, anyway, she confirmed that that is what it was. Yeah? Yeah. Right. So, do you have any idea what this person actually does? I have a pharmacist who I think I can use. So here's the problem with most new site owners. They don't take enough of an initiative. You, the sponsors are interested in your SOP. What does your SOP say? Your PI can do, you've seen from the FDA, there's very few regulations the PIs actually have to follow for the most part. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's a highly regulated industry for the sponsors, but when it comes to a PI doing a study, there's a framework they have to play into, but when it comes to who who is your IP preparer, the FDA is not getting involved in that. Well, The PI does what he or she thinks whoever will do a good job, that's who they delegate it to. Well, yeah, I think you're glossing over a few things here. One, uh, getting back to just the the title of test article prepare, uh, the sponsors don't care if they hear a question, what is this, right? Right. That's, okay, that's, yeah, let's even take a step back. Yeah. Right. If you're uncertain, you can ask, mm -hmm. right? I'm, I'm sorry, I'm not familiar with a test article prepare. Can you please define further or something along those lines? Good point. So it's fine to bring it back and say, hey, you know, can you clarify what this is? Mm -hmm. But I can understand why people refuse to do that, and that's a whole other podcast. Sure, if, if they are New kind side of research owners, naive, yeah. they don't want to look like they're naive. I right. get it, I get it too. Right. And that's why when I don't know something, I tell them, you're okay to ask this question. Yes. The but, benefit of being a DSCS client. Right. Uh, now, if you were to s send me a question, hey, what's a 1572, I would advise you not to turn around and ask that question. <laughs> Correct. Um, let me explain it to you. Correct. Okay. Now... Back to the point, my main point for this question. One other thing glossed over. Yeah. Um, crap. Oh, uh, sometimes the sponsor or CRO will tell you what the, qualifi what the test article preparer must meet in terms of qualifications. Correct. Correct. And this is kind of related to a couple of questions I got today. Um, so basically what I was going to say, people assume that sponsors will only accept the one way of doing something. Right. And that's not the case, unless the protocol specifies it. Sometimes it doesn't even specify in the protocol, but they have, like for example, a protocol. Sponsor may have their own requirements. Right, exactly. But if they don't, then it's on or, you. or you don't know yet, and they're the just PI. asking you a question. Yeah, it's on the PI or site SOPs. And if you have a pharmacist, which is this person did, of course you can use them. Absolutely. So pharmacists do. Yep. You don't even need a pharmacist, maybe. Yeah, it might, you might be able to do it. And many of our studies, are. the IP preparer, some of them are you. Right? Yeah, that's true. Some of them are the coordinator. Some of them you do need a nurse practitioner. But the sponsor is going to let you know that. And look, the sponsor, if it's in your SOP, you got to follow that. Unless the sponsor has a stricter requirement, mm -hmm. and then they're going to have you modify your SOP for that study. Yep. That's it. Yeah. you got to know your SOP. Pretty cut and dry. You as a site owner need to well, know your SOP. And what are the requirements. And what are the requirements. And you are the owner. Mm -hmm. You can modify your SOP. Ooh, you can. You, this is why it's so cool to be a site owner. You decide how things run in your clinic. Right? Yeah, absolutely. Not the sponsor, you. Well, no, sometimes the sponsor a little bit. Sometimes they are, but most of the time it's on you as yep. the site owner. Yep. And very true. few, very few research naive site owners, with maybe with good reason, don't take the initiative to do that. Mm -hmm. Right? They take a passive approach. And a lot of the questions I got today. Well, I understand the fear, though. I, I do too. 
but we're telling you, or we're telling them it's okay. Yeah, when it's not and when it is okay to, to ask for clarification. Correct. So when it comes to how you operate at your site, you got to know GCP, you got to make sure you're within that framework, mm -hmm. you got to know the protocol, are you going to be complying with the protocol, and that's it. Yeah. You know, make it work within those parameters. Mm -hmm. Regardless of the procedure, the assessment, whatever it may be, one site may do it this way, another site may do it that way, they both will be allowed to do it. Yep. Right? Another question, and I got a lot of questions in, like, related to, they want to know my procedure for this, for that. Like, we got another one for source documents today. Mm, that's true, we did. You want to bring that up? That one I understood even less. Yeah, well, uh, maybe let them know a little bit of what, what I didn't understand. What you did understand. Well, so it was a document. Uh, it stated basically it looked like the schedule of assessments. And then that was in one, it had two columns. And then the other column, it, it said explanation or something like that. Right? Yeah. And gave space for each schedule of assessment. And that was it. It was literally a page with a line down the middle. On one side, every single assessment for that study. Right. And this was a form from the sponsor sent to the site. Yeah. And it was all pertaining to how you keep, how the site keeps, it was another SOP related question. How the site keeps their source data confidential. Now, you had seen this form, so you were aware of it. I've seen forms like this. But we had no explanation from the person that sent this to us. Right. Nor did we see the request from the sponsor, so I, you know, right. I, it was a clue I saw what this was about. Yeah, I knew what it was when I looked at the form. I was like, oh yeah, they're just looking for source data protection. Like, how do you keep the patient info confidential? The, and every sponsor is going to send you a different, sometimes they don't send you any form. Yeah, but a lot of times the forms are a little bit more understandable. It asks right. for how do you keep this material confidential? And I, I it has an explanation on it. I think this was another one of those foreign sponsors. I'm working with a lot of them now. Mm -hmm. Foreign sponsors, English is not their first language, and things don't exactly translate in a way we are used to hearing it. Right, right. Like test article preparer. Mm -hmm. It's actually supposed to be IP, investigational product preparer. Or something like IP that. IP administrator. Something like right. that. So yeah. same thing there. So how, how do they keep the source data Protected. The answer was very simple. Sure. Give them the answer. Well, it's whatever you do at your site. Again, back to the SOP. Right. Right. Understand HIPAA. Understand GCP. Privacy of the patients is one of the 13 GCP elements. Mm -hmm. Right. So within that framework, however your site and your PI Operates. thinks it's best to maintain that, yep. that is your SOP. If the sponsor has a problem with it, they will let you know. Yep. You need to change your SOPs. So take more initiative, okay? But I understand why you don't. All right, a few more questions I got from Instagram and then we'll wrap it up. Uh, Cause I actually got another interview to do with one of our former CRA Academy students. It's almost six. Almost. I have to upload this one and then I gotta get ready for that one. Um, oh, I've been quite much longer than it feels like. Yeah, 23, it's cause we went off topic for quite right. a while. Okay, I got a couple on Instagram. Let's go through this one. Okay, and you can follow me on Instagram, Dan Spera. All right, I have a question. If you're to visit a general practitioner after discussing trials, so I'm assuming this is someone from a site that is prospecting new physicians. As SIPI or looking for yeah. referrals? Well, everything. Okay. Yeah. They're looking for physicians, they're prospecting physicians for either referrals or new investigators or someone to join their team, right? Okay. What marketing materials do you leave for the practice for follow-up? And I told them to email me and I sent him the brochure we have, the one-page flyer, which anyone, anyone who wants that can email me, dan at theclinicaltrialsguru.com, I'll send it to you. But basically, it's a one-page flyer It states the benefits of being a PI from a private practice practitioner standpoint, right. right? How to bring in an extra revenue stream to your own business mm -hmm. without doing anything different, really, mm -hmm. right? Having a few expenses in addition, like mm -hmm. a study coordinator, namely. Mm -hmm. So this person 
is hitting up a bunch of people in his area about joining his site. Mm -hmm. And he's so hung up on his marketing materials that he's forgetting the the big picture, okay. which is to actually follow up. So I told him a brochure, but the follow up needs to be human, i.e., you keep going back until they acquiesce. Ah, uh, this is where you. That is where I put my acquiescence. Okay. I got it from the office when Dwight Schrute says, "We will never acquiesce." Yeah, you're probably. I gotta show you that speech, but I've read the word a few times and I and I've heard it a few times, but no more than ten times. Yeah, remind me to show you that Dwight Schrute office speech. Basically means surrender. Yeah. Okay, so. Uh. That, that's my advice to him. Okay, I so said basically the brochure, but that's not the important part. Okay? Sure, you and then have, he you replies, a conversation with the doctor. He, then he replies, do you think there's any need for branded items like stationery, etc.? So yeah. he thinks that by having a, you know, sticky cards or something that I, the site can use. I think a business card is helpful. A business card is helpful, but he's talking about like stationery for the front desk girls. Like... The last thing they need, they get visited by reps all the time. The last thing they need is branded yeah, they don't anything care. They don't care. for me, right? Not only do they not care, here's why it's foolish for a small site to try to no. compete. I would just like to go off on that caveat real quick. Go, and then I'll come back. If it were recruitment materials for patients, yes, you might leave materials. Right? Yes. Flyers, pamphlets. Yes, that's not the question. I'm just saying, if it were, yes, yes. with referrals for patients, yes, you would. Mm -hmm. But not if you're trying to find a new PI. No, that's not something you're going to do. Correct. So, and I, I, br I bring this question up because I think a lot of people get hung up on, these, on the technicalities instead of actually putting in the work, which mm -hmm. is going, communicating, getting out in front of people. Doing it over and over and over again. Yeah, I completely agree. Okay, so I said no. Sales reps already do that from pharma. If it's a big group, even if it's a small private practice, they get hit up by sales reps. There's all kinds of branded stuff they leave. You not only is it not only is it something they don't need. You cannot compete with Pfizer or Johnson oh, you, and Johnson. I disagree, but you can. I think if you brought a nice big platter of cookies in, yes, I think you're competing. When it comes to branded items, right? But if you want attention, was, they can't compete from the office staff. Ah, but that's that. Well, I was gonna get to that. Okay. You Sorry. can't compete on spending for branded material. Right. The pans and you're gonna lose. Products. J and J is gonna outspend you sure. easily. Right. It's not. You don't want to play that game. What you can do, like you just brought up, think outside the box. j and is not allowed to have their reps go to Costco and buy cookies and bring them to the office. Mm -hmm. right? j and J's reps also have so many places they need to hit up that you are literally just another number to them. Mm -hmm. You do not have to play by those same rules. Mm -hmm. You can go every day. I basically told this guy, go every day until they tell you not to do it anymore. And then keep doing it over mm -hmm. and over. To bring cookies once in a while. Bring cookies to the day. staff. I bribed. We've bribed front office girls with Starbucks cards. That's right. Right. Cookies and Starbucks cards. Big yeah. five dollar Starbucks cards, like counting. And it works. We got us meetings with the doctors. Yep. Yeah. Right. It absolutely did. And then it's on us to follow up. So that's where you really can compete. Mm -hmm. Is on the sweat equity side. Yep. Not on the financial resources side. Like, oh, I'm gonna spend this much to. That's not gonna do anything. I agree. You can go to Staples and put your logo on all kinds and, of stuff. And even if you could compete with Pfizer, it's still nothing they care about. It's Correct. just not going to make an impression. At least not my opinion. Correct. Uh, It'll make an impression. Bring some cookies and Starbucks cards. Let me see. Oh, I got another one. Oh, I didn't reply to this one. Oh, and if you do bring cookies and Starbucks cards, make sure and ask for... Uh, this is a true story. Dan and I went to a one physician's office, and they just told us no. We asked if we could see the physician, if he could just spare two minutes. Mm -hmm. They said no, absolutely not. Oh, and here we forgot, here's some cookies we brought for your for your staff here. Right? This right. Was, this was 
with the receptionist, and she turned around and giggled and talked to us a few people, and they said, yeah, maybe we can get you two minutes with the doctor. Yeah. So, yeah, you want to make an impression, bring stuff for well, them. Bring gifts. That's right. Yeah, I think that's enough questions for this one. This was going on for a while. Uh, anything else you want to add? Mm, no, I think that's good. It's a good episode. 30 minutes. Yeah, episode... 255. I'm about to do 256 here. Really quickly, thank you everybody for listening. Text Guru to 31996. Chris Sauber, email him chris at brkthru.org. Thanks. To, no, not for any reason. You've got to try to guess his age. Oh, that's right. Remember? We started it that way. Yeah. He's a lot. What can do? He uh, looks much younger. Not much, but he looks significantly younger Aren't you being kind? than he is. I am being kind. That's <laughs> very kind. Uh, Anything you want to add? I, I think that takes away the compliment by saying, yes, I am being very kind. <laughs> <laughs> no, you you look younger than you are. Okay. Fair enough. You're not old. Um, some would argue I am, but I'm like, not gonna, you want occasion. I don't want to drop any more hints. You want occasion. I'm old. No, you want occasion to argue I'm old. Oh, yeah. That, that's <laughs> just to make fun of you, man. All right. Anything else? No, it's good. We're good. Chris at brkthru.org. Guess his age. He will Venmo you some money. No, he won't. He won't. <laughs> <laughs> if they buy the book, he will. Well, that's the agreement between us. Yeah. That's right. Okay. So you, in a roundabout way, you'll still get Yeah, money. that's only for the first few. And if you have a good reason... Of what you're going to do with that money. Right. And if it's to buy stationery for your branding shit, it's going to be denied. But cookies and Starbucks card. Yes. Maybe. Cookies and Starbucks card we will do. Letterhead logo nonsense. No. Nobody cares about your logo, first right. of all. Right. It makes you look a little more professional. Yeah. A little. But if you have none, it's not going to hurt you. And the ROI is not there. The ROI is much better spent on a business card. Yep. Even if you don't have a business card, the IRI is spent on your mouth. You go in there and you talk. Yep. Right? That's it. Thank you, everybody. Take care.